Hello everyone. Today we'll be talking about lung mechanics and we'll cover the topic compliance. Whenever you breathe, you work against two forces. One is the elastic resistance, which is called elastance of the lungs, and the second is the non-elastic resistance, which is commonly called resistive portion of the lungs. The elastic portion of the lungs comes from your elasticity of lungs and chest wall. Though this is a very small component, the bigger component comes from the forces at alveolar gas liquid interface. The resistive component, as you know, comes from frictional resistance to the airflow, inertia of gas and tissues, and frictional resistance to the tissue deformation in lungs and chest wall. So compliance is nothing but inverse of elastance, which is defined as change in tidal volume by driving pressure. That means how much volume will change with a given pressure. So let's take three alveoli. The left one is very compliant and the rightmost is least compliant. And when you give them a pressure delta P, you see that the very compliant alveoli gets most of the air while the least compliant alveoli gets least amount of air. So with the same pressure, volume is much higher in highly compliant alveoli. If you want to generate similar volumes, you will realize that you need much higher pressure inflating the less compliant alveoli. The poorly compliant alveoli are seen in diseases such as pulmonary fibrosis, while highly compliant alveoli are seen in diseases such as emphysema. Compliance of the respiratory system is nothing but tidal volume divided by the driving pressure. The driving pressure is the difference between the inspiratory and expiratory pressure. End expiration, your intraplural pressures are about negative 3, while at end inspiration, they are around minus 6. So that gives a driving pressure of 3, which gives compliance of 166 cc per centimeter of water. This is also called static compliance. The way we measure compliance in the respiratory system is by applying an inspiratory pause at the end of the inspiration and let the pressure equilibrate in the lungs. The pressure will slowly come down and form a plateau pressure. So the static compliance will be your tidal volume in that breath divided by the plateau pressure minus PEEP. Since PEEP is present throughout the inspiratory and expiratory cycle, the drying pressure is plateau minus PEEP. Most of the lung elastins originates at air fluid interface of the alveoli. If you remember, the pressure inside a bubble is defined as 2 times surface tension divided by R. Adding surfactant drops the surface tension of water from 70 to 220. So to lower pressure in the alveoli, you need to lower the surface tension and increase the radius. The analogy to this is that it's very difficult to blow a balloon when you start inflating it, but it becomes easier once it is blown up. Going by this principle, the pressure inside an alveoli with smaller radius will be much higher than one with a larger radius. So the smaller alveoli should empty into the larger alveoli and become atelectatic. But this does not happen. And the reason this doesn't happen is because surfactant has a unique property that is the surface tension decreases with surface area. When you add detergent to water, the surface tension drops. But when you add surfactant to the water, it actually forms a loop shown in green. And you can see at this point, when the area is small, the surface tension is low. And at this point, when the area is high, the surface tension is higher as well. This loop you would commonly see and know as hysteresis. So why does surface tension change with area? The reason this happens is because the lung surfactant has got hydrophobic and hydrophilic end and as the volume inside the alveoli drops, these surfactants, they start clustering together and start repelling more and more. So in fact, the surfactants become better at reducing surface tension when they come closer to each other. That's why the surface tension decreases with area. However, hysteresis is more complicated than that and has got more underlying reasons for it. The hysteresis occurs mostly from loss of energy in the system. Hysteresis is noticed in most elastic bodies because these are imperfectly elastic. So some energy is wasted no matter what. So if you look at the loop of water and detergent, they're not straight lines. They actually enclose a small area in this rectangle, which is a hysteresis loop. In lungs, there are more mechanisms at play. 
the mechanical energy is required to open derecruited alloy and energy is required to break the molecular adhesions also surface tension is greater during inflation than deflation there is also some redistribution of gases due to alveoli with different time constant and some absorption of the gas which leads to formation of hysteresis loop because of this property more pressure is required during inflation than deflation and the area between these two curves is the energy lost during the breath so why don't smaller alloy simply collapse this is because reduced surface tension in the smaller alveoli as the surfactant come closer and this reduces the pressure inside the smaller alveoli so air has to move from the larger to the smaller alveoli till the pressure equilibrates as you can see from the pressure volume loop the compliance is not same through the inspiratory cycle and it is also not the same during expiration there is a term called dynamic compliance which gives you change in tidal volume by change in driving pressure at any point on this curve compliance will be given by slope of the line so you can see that the top and the bottom of this curve are very stiff and the most compliant area is right in the center to find overall dynamic compliance you perform the inspiratory pause again however you are looking for the point where the ventilator flow comes down to zero and the point where it intersects with the inspiratory pause is known as p1 the driving pressure when you are calculating the dynamic compliance is your p1 minus the total p so in fact dynamic compliance will consist of tissue resistance in its compliance measurement there is usually around 2 cm difference between static and dynamic compliance the clinical relevance of one over the other is unknown when you talk about the compliance we are talking about the total compliance of the chest wall and the lungs this is the elasticity of the lungs so as your lung volume increase the lungs become more stiffer however the chest wall becomes less stiff with higher lung volumes the compliance of lungs and chest wall is given by this green line and you can see that both at the top and the bottom you have more stiffer system while right in the center you have the most compliant region so at frc the compliance of the system is the best compliance of an alveoli also depends of its position in the lungs if you remember the negative pressure in the lungs is different at apex and base so the alveoli are at different position in this pressure volume loop the alveoli in the bottom is in more compliant area as compared to the alveoli in the upper part of the lungs which is already overstretched and giving both of them similar amount of pressure will result in more volume being delivered to the basal alveoli as compared to the apical alveoli so compliance differs with different areas of the lungs and depends upon gravity compliance of an alveoli also depends on its frc so if you are breathing at low frc your pressure in the lungs are now 0 and -5 instead of -2.5 and -10 so the alveoli at the base are now in more compromised zone where there is more atelectasis and the lungs are much stiffer as compared to the alveoli much higher so compliance differs with changes in lung volumes as well now frc depends upon the body position and as you sit more upright your frc increases by up to 33% that's why you want to keep the head of the bed elevated for your hypoxemic patients why do you need to know the compliance it gives you three very important information first is you can diagnose whether there is a compliance problem and it's very helpful on the ventilator you can diagnose conditions like pneumothorax lobar collapse etc and we'll talk about these in our next lecture when we talk about peak and plateau pressures it also lets you know how to set your tidal volumes and peep to avoid over distension and avoid atelectasis it also tells you how the disease process is progressing you can figure out if your ards is getting worse or better the respiratory system compliance depends both on thoracic case and the lung compliance so thoracic compliance can get worse with obesity with scarring of thoracic walls increasing abdominal distension like in ascites and in patient with scoliosis and kyphosis in prone position thoracic case is less compliant decrease in lung compliance is seen in both alveolar overdistension and alveolar underdistension 
It also decreases with supine posture. It also gets worse with increased blood volume and decreased functional lung volume. Loss of surfactant and increasing age also decrease lung compliance. In disease with consolidation, collapse, pulmonary edema and fibrosis, compliance is worse. One of the things that you have to remember is even in these disease states, there can be areas of normal compliance and poor compliance. So one of the goal in treating these patients is to prevent over distension of normal areas. You can use compliance to have an idea about optimal tidal volumes and PEEP. I have discussed this in great detail in my previous lecture on how to calculate tidal volume and how to calculate optimal PEEP. Please feel free to review them. In short, you want to keep your tidal volumes low so that your pressure do not cross the upper inflection point or a plateau pressure of more than 30. To find the optimal PEEP, you want to keep your PEEP levels at least few points above the lower inflection point, which is the point below which that electasis begins. In summary, you work against elastic and non-elastic components when you breathe. An elastic component comprises mostly of air-water interface and elasticity of lungs and chest wall. Compliance is defined as change in volume for a given change in pressure. Compliance changes with where you are on the inspiratory or expiratory limb, your lung volumes, posture, thoracic case and abdominal compliance, and various disease state. Knowing compliance can help you diagnose, prognosticate, and set up some important parameters on the ventilator. Thank you.